My Canadian friends tell me it's really bad up in Canada. Trudeau and the government there have gone so far left. I'm going to give you an example from the University of Toronto. You won't believe how far crazy they've gone on the subject of Israel. We've got a lot of followers at American Truth Project in Canada. And uh, in fact, we just had dinner with uh, a really nice couple from Toronto the other day. And they were complaining about their country going off a cliff of woke. And not even a little woke, like incredibly woke. Canada has literally gone off the deep end. And I've got an example here that I really can't believe. This gentleman had talked to me about it. And then a couple days later, I started reading about York University. Uh, it's in Toronto. Uh, it's also known as York U or YU. It's a public research university in Toronto. It's Canada's third largest university. They have 55,000 students there, 7,000 faculty, 370,000 alumni around the world. I mean, it's a big, big educational institution. They have put out a booklet for their teachers on how to teach about Palestine. It is filled with hate. It's filled with anti-Semitism and it's filled out with a whole lot of lies. I wanna just show you the introduction. It's, it's like 10 pages long, but if you look at this, this will give you an idea, okay? So what they're talking about is they're calling for a campus-wide Palestinian teach-in for the Palestinian struggle for liberation because that has so much to do with Canada. So I'll read it to you. For the first time in our lifetimes, victims of genocide are live broadcasting the genocide of their people, the destruction of their culture and history, and the deprivation of basic access to sanitation, healthcare, food, shelter, and educa education through Israel's targeted attacks on Gaza's vital infrastructure. Following a long and brutal 75-year settler colonial occupation of Palestine, we are witnessing something more horrific than the 1948 Nabka, the catastrophe, which is their word for uh, the founding of the state of Israel. Now, let me clear up a couple of things. Wow. From 1948 to 1967, who ruled Gaza? Egypt did. It was Egyptian territory. And it was captured back from Egypt in 1967 in the Six-Day War by Israel because it's been traditionally Israeli territory since the Bible. 3,000 years ago. <laughs> and then, in a fit of what I consider to be diplomatic stupidity, the Prime Minister of Israel at the time, Ariel Sharon, pulled out of Gaza in 2006 and gave the land to the Palestinians that lived there. So since 2006, no Jews, zero Jews. In fact, no dead Jews. They dug up the Jews in the cemeteries and trucked the coffins back to Israel. So for the last 17, 18 years, the property of Gaza has been ruled by Hamas, a murderous dictatorship fashioned after Nazi Germany. Similar hand, similar salutes, similar propaganda, similar murders, except they're a lot rougher on certain people like gays that they execute, like non-Muslims who have left the Muslim faith who they execute. Uh, women have no rights. It's all men. The three leading members of Hamas's government are all worth billions and billions and billions that they've stolen from the money given to them by the EU, by the UN, by Israel, by the United States, and so on. And yet this major university has decided that they're living under occupation today. And this university is so filled with stupidity that to them, it's 75 years of occupation. Can you explain this to me? Because I'm just not smart enough. With all my education, I don't understand how you can occupy a country where you're not there. 
how you can be in a territory and not be in a territory. Yeah. You notice, hey, Barry, the, please. You notice Barry, how they're constantly saying 75 years. You know, you've, you've heard that so many times, right? You've 75 years, 75 years, 75 years since 1948, 75 years, 75 years. But you notice they never can say Palestine was ever a state. How come they can't say that? Because it's never been a state. It's never been a state. Israel has always been there. Israel was only recognized as a state by the United Nations in 1948. Is that a correct statement? Say it again, please. Israel was recognized by the United, United Nations as a state in 1948. And the reason, to my understanding, the reason why the United Nations went ahead and labeled and recognized Israel as a state so then that way they could have safety and security. They could get assistance. They can get, you know, military support, what have you, whatever it is they need to survive. Because not only did you have the Nazis, but you have the Muslim community trying to constantly kill them. They never said it was a state for Palestine. But Barry, 75 years, they always go to that date when the United Nations labeled them as a state. But they don't want to acknowledge that Israel was there before then. What? Okay, so in 1948, that's when they became a state. And then what? All the people just moved there then? No, they were already there. It's more than that. When the Israelis were in Gaza, they were digging up archaeological sites that were showing coins during the Roman occupation, which is the time of Jesus, uh -huh. 2,000 years ago. They were digging up candelabras and Hebrew inscriptions on stones from the time of King David 3,000 <laughs> years ago. It was just a country reestablished after thousands of years, but the Jews had been there constantly. Barry, who is the Wailing Wall? How long has it been there? Well, that was the, it was built during the time of Solomon right? King Solomon built it. <laughs> it was destroyed by the Romans. Okay. Then it was rebuilt, right? Uh -huh. And then destroyed by the Assyrians uh -huh. and finally destroyed in 70 AD. In other words, that temple is where <laughs> Jesus turned over the money changing tables, right? Right. That's where Jesus preached on the steps of the temple. When was that, Will? <laughs> 2,000 years ago. And, yeah. and Barry, but my point of bringing that up is that who are they claiming built that wall? <laughs> let's, 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 I mean, who are they claiming built that? I mean, so if it wasn't until 1948, because a lot of them, they used 1948, talking about 75 years ago, as if no Jewish were there until 1948. So again, you bring that little tidbit of history. Who built that wall? <laughs> Jews! I mean, <laughs> it's like a no-brainer, but they don't want to look at the wall. historical fact Listen, of it all. Yes. I have been there. I've been under the Temple Mount. I've been on the Temple Mount. I filmed there. You can see the artifacts from the time of the Bible, New Testament and Old Testament. If you've got ears, eyes, and a brain, you can see it. But all these people marching in the streets in Toronto say, Gaza's occupied. The Jews just showed up. They're not even there. They haven't been yeah. in that in that area for 17 years. Not a single living Jew, not a single dead Jew, not a synagogue, not a cemetery. All gone. I'm just pointing out Canada has gone freaking retarded. Absolutely. I don't know, I have another word for it. But you know what? This is because of Trudeau and the rest of the tyrants in Canada. But Barry, that same mindset is not just in Canada. It is spreading across the planet. It's even here in the United States of America, the same mindset. You saw what they just did in Chicago. And that's still mind blowing to me. How in the world is the mayor of Chicago? Why is he even concerned about a ceasefire in Israel when he has homelessness, he has the legal problems, he has the drug problem, the crime problem, the shooting problem. He has all of these problems, but he wants to focus on passing legislation talking about we're pushing for a ceasefire. And then after he did it, all of these Hamas Palestinian terror supporters in 
in, in that was in the house at that time. They're all crying because of this idiot mayor. They're all in there crying. Oh, there's a ceasefire. Really? Okay, what does it mean? I, I wish I would have been there, Barry, with the microphone and the camera. So now that the mayor has done this in Chicago, what does this mean for Israel? What does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? You know, what do you know, mean? I, the, 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 is, is Israel going to stop now? I want to add to your, I, I want to add to the Will Johnson interview. <laughs> mayor, you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of black on black murder going on <laughs> yep. in your city. How will a peace deal in Israel stop the mass murder in Chicago? You have the biggest drug problem in the country. How will a peace treaty in Israel solve your drug problem? You have 10,000 immigrants who are illegally here, living in your airport, living in your parks, taking over your schools. In the police in the department. Park. Living in the Hyatt, how and is the police? The, Barry, the they're living. They're living on the floors in the police department. Criminals broke the I, law. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that one. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, yeah, Barry. They, they've they've housed some of them in the police department because they ran, they're running out of spaces to put them. Well, it is a sanctuary city. Hello, <laughs> they got what they wanted. Oh, thousands and thousands yes. and thousands of people that they're going to try and re register to vote Democrat for them. They'll register yes. you for you yeah. so yeah. that you can vote. Right. So you can vote in November to keep the president the same. Yeah. Good luck yeah. with that.